you guys, I'm Haley Springston. I'm the Watershed Planning Coordinator with the Rondout Never Sink Stream Program. And today I'm going to be taking you guys on a virtual geology hike. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how the Catskill landscape forms. I'll go over how to identify some common rock types and rock structures that you see throughout the Catskills. And I'll wrap things up by showing you how you can travel through geologic time simply by walking along a Catskill stream. The Rondout Never Sink Stream Program asks all hikers to practice leave no trace principles. The Catskill region is vulnerable to overuse and it's important that we all do our part to preserve this beautiful landscape. This stream is located within the Never Sink Reservoir watershed. A watershed, also known as a catchment or drainage basin, is the total land area that drains to a specific location. The waters of this tributary flow into the Neversink River, which then flow to the Neversink Reservoir. The waters of the Neversink Reservoir are eventually used as water supply for New York City. A few hundred million years ago, where this narrow brook flows today, there existed wide floodplains and winding rivers. These ancient rivers flowed to a wide-spanning delta where multiple wandering rivers flowed to sea. The story of Catskill streams begins about 380 million years ago during what geologists refer to as the Devonian period. Geologists organized the history of the Earth from the planet's formation to the present day into a geologic time scale. The geologic time scale that you see here is organized by segments of time referred to as periods. The Devonian period, which is the period we'll be talking about in this video, spans from roughly 420 to 360 million years ago. During the Devonian period, a mountain building event occurred known as the Acadian Orogeny. An orogeny is a process where a section of the Earth's crust undergoes lateral compression, the crust deforms, and a mountain range is created. Basically, an orogeny is any mountain building event. Think of the lateral compression of the Earth's crust as the hood of a car during a car crash. After the collision, parts of the car's hood will buckle outwards while other parts will crumple inwards. During the Acadian orogeny, an ancient small continent known as Avalonia collides with what is now the east coast of North America. The lateral compression from this collision results in the uplift of mountains along the eastern North American coastline. This mountain range is known as the Acadian Mountains. Along the western edge of the coastal Acadian Mountains, the existing shallow inland sea begins to deepen. The section of sea alongside the rising mountain belt begins to fill in with the mud, sand, and gravel eroding from the rising Acadian Mountains. Atop the freshly risen Acadian Mountains, rivers and streams form and begin to flow downslope towards the westward shallow sea. The Devonian rivers and streams erode or wear down the peaks of the Acadian Mountains. The rivers and streams transport the eroded material downstream and drop or deposit the material along the river channels and the nearby floodplains. As the rivers finally flow into the slow-moving, shallow sea, they deposit their remaining material, forming a delta. A river delta is a landform that's created when the mouth of a river meets slower moving or still water and the river deposits sediment. Over time, this process of deposition along the river channels, floodplains, and delta creates a layer of sediment over a mile thick known as the Catskill Delta Complex. The Catskill Delta Complex is made of the material shed from the Acadian Mountains. The solid, unbroken rock we'll see in this video is the remains of the Catskill Delta complex that formed from streamside and floodplain deposition along the ancient winding river channels. Present day Catskill rivers and streams continue to erode, transport, and deposit the remains of the Catskill Delta complex. This means that the sediment we see carried by Catskill streams today are largely the same sediments once carried by the ancient Devonian rivers. The stream alternates between bedrock control channels and alluvial channels. Let's break down what those terms mean. Bedrock is solid or liquefied rock. Where I'm standing is an example of a bedrock control channel. In this section of the stream, the riverbed is made primarily of exposed, visible bedrock. 
Sediment is loose material that's broken off of solid bedrock through the processes of weathering and erosion. Sediment that's transported by flowing rivers or streams is called alluvium. This is an example of an alluvial channel. An alluvial channel is made of loose, unconsolidated material that makes it easy for the river to change its shape during high flow events. When you look closely at the rocks within alluvial and bedrock channels, you can find clues about the river's past. Let's take a closer look at two common rock types found in Catskill streams, sandstones and mud rocks. These are examples of sandstone. Sandstone is a sedimentary rock and it's primarily made of sand-sized particles that have been cemented together. It's common to find quartz minerals within Catskill sandstones. Quartz is highly resistant to weathering processes at the Earth's surface. Although they look different, the gravel and cobble you can pick up along the stream bed and stream banks is actually made of the same sandstone composition as the bedrock seen along the stream. This is shale, a rock you're probably already familiar with. Shale is easy to recognize because it has high facility, meaning it easily breaks into thin, platy slabs. You can observe the thin layers less than a centimeter thick within shale. These thin layers are known as laminations. Shale is considered part of the rock class known as mud rocks. Mud rocks are fine-grained sedimentary rocks they're primarily made of very small, fine-grained particles less than 0.063 millimeters in diameter. The mudrock class includes shale, mudstones, and siltstones. This section of bedrock is made of two types of mudrocks, mudstone and shale. You can see the unlayered mudstone shelf here, transitioning to the thin-layered shale. So, when we see sandstone and mudrock layers while hiking along a stream, what does this tell us about how the river was formed? The sandstone rock we've seen today formed from the compacted, cemented sediment the Devonian streams transported from the peaks of the Acadian Mountains nearly 380 million years ago. The sandstones we see are the remnants of the ancient river channels that formed the Catskill Delta complex. Take a closer look at the sedimentary structure in the sandstone here. You can see the dipping and cross-cutting layers in the sandstone. This sedimentary structure is known as cross-bedding. It's a clue that this sandstone bedrock was formed from river channel deposition. The harsh lines between the sloped cross-bed layers are erosional surfaces. Cross-bedding can be found in sandstones throughout Catskill River valleys. These repeated cross-bedding structures are evidence that the rock you see was formed as the ancient river channels shifted and meandered over time. The mud rocks we've seen in this video formed within the floodplains of the ancient Devonian River Channel Network. A floodplain is an area of low-lying land located alongside the edge of a river channel that becomes flooded during high flow events. By examining the existing sedimentary structures within mud rocks, we can determine that the ancient floodplains were frequently flooded and forested. The red mudstones are often highly fractured in a hexagonal pattern that records the wetting and drying of very fine sediment on the floodplain. If we look closely at some of the other mud rocks along the stream, we can see patterns that reveal the traces of the forest roots that pulled nutrients from the Devonian flood sediment into primitive trees and small plants. In some of the green-gray siltstones and shales, we can find faintly scribed impressions of fern-like leaves. We can find impressions of broken branches that covered the bottom of pools or ponds. If you walk along this stream, you'll probably notice there's a repeated pattern of sandstone and mud rock layers overtopping each other. This repeated pattern is evidence that this location used to feature meandering streams. As the ancient channels meandered or wove across the landscape, a single location would change from being an active stream bed to a stream bank to a floodplain area. This change in depositional setting is recorded in the rock record. By reading the geologic story, we can see the evidence that this area of the Catskills has experienced vast change.
What we see today is a single mountain brook, but go back 380 million years and we'd be looking at multiple winding river channels with spanning floodplains located upstream of a wide spanning river delta fertile with the planet's early terrestrial forests. The sedimentary bedrock layers of the Catskills have remained geologically undisturbed over time. This makes Catskill rivers excellent records of geologic time. According to one of the founding principles of geology, the principle of superposition, younger rock layers sit above older rock layers. For instance, the lowest rock layer in a sequence is the oldest. The rock layer deposited next is younger than the first rock layer and sits above the first layer. As you walk downstream, you're walking towards a lower elevation and you're moving lower in the sequence of sedimentary bedrock layers. This means moving downstream, you're walking along older and older bedrock layers. So when you walk with the flow of a Catskill stream, you're ultimately traveling backward in geologic time. And when you walk against the flow of a Catskill stream, you're ultimately traveling forward in geologic time. Thanks everyone for joining me on today's hike. Uh, I hope you all learned a little something about geology. And thank you for watching. Stay safe and happy spring.